Joining me now is best-selling author of The Madness of Crowds and The Strange Death of Europe, as well as associate editor of The Spectator, Douglas Murray. Douglas, let's start with today's New York Post front page. Joe Bryben, the FBI has a secret file alleging then Veep Biden took money from foreign nationals. Of course, those of us who've been paying attention to the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop are not too shocked by these uh, news reports. No, that's right, Rita. I mean, the extraordinary thing is, of course, is that you say those of us who've been paying attention. Unfortunately, a lot of the media have not been paying attention. Uh, it's it's three years now since the New York Post broke the Hunter Biden laptop uh, story. It's three years since most of the media in America and most of the rest of the world shut the story down. It's three years since Twitter and Facebook and others suspended the account of the New York Post. And so uh, a lot of people, if they got anything of this story, only got the you know, salacious side of it, let's say. But that was never the story. And you and I have discussed this before. The story was never really the, uh, you know, the, the sex and the drugs and things. The story was whether or not the first, what is now the first family in America is, is purchasable. And that by any standards in any era other than our own would be the story of the day. And it's only because we live in this strange world where you can sort of people pursue whatever, you know, fits their own agenda, that people are just catching up with this. But I think that's to the detriment, not just of America and the media, but of, uh, of all of the democracies and the ability of the free media to actually chase down what are real stories. Now... We're only 24 hours away from the coronation, um, but the activist class have got in nice and early. They're demanding King Charles meet a list of demands. And, of course, the Australian left have joined in this. Uh, the Guardian reports Australians have joined Indigenous leaders and politicians across the Commonwealth to demand King Charles III make a formal apology for the effects of British colonisation and make reparations by redistributing the wealth of the British Crown. Douglas, your response? I mean, it's amazing, isn't it, Rita? Uh, uh, first of all, how many apologies would, uh, would these people in question like? And how much cash do they want? And, 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 and to which account do they want it to be wired? I mean, it, it's so preposterous. I, I get the strong feeling that a lot of the people who are doing this activism are, as I've suggested to you before, either just rattling a tin cup and hoping that somebody will, uh, will, will, will put some cash in it, or actually wildly historically ignorant, very ignorant people, and shakedown merchants. That's all we're dealing with at this point. And, um, you know, uh, it would be interesting It would be interesting to get into the granular detail. They always want the granular detail to be suggested, uh, uh, provided by the people they're criticising. Let's get into the granular detail of what these people are actually suggesting. You know, as I say, whose bank account do they want the money to be paid into? Um, uh, uh, how many times do people have to apologise? Um, how many generations, by the way, does inherited guilt last for? I mean, let's pretend that the British monarchy has anything to do with current Aboriginal issues in Australia. Let's pretend for a moment it does. Um, how many generations does that involve? Uh, can we do it the other way around? Mm -hmm. Does any Aboriginal who's ever done anything wrong have to account for generations for things? I... I it, it's such a preposterous thing at this stage. There's a very funny piece I'd urge people to read at The Spectator at the moment. It's online by somebody writing slightly tongue-in-cheek, perhaps not, uh, uh, called Sean Thomas, saying, um, tracing his own family lineage in the UK back and saying, uh, what might I be owed? Uh, he's worked out that most mm -hmm. of his forebears in the 19th century worked down tin mines, and they worked down those mines at the age of 10, uh, 10 onwards, wow. and the average life expectancy was 23. Well, mm. who owes who what for that? 
That was an average person in Britain. That was an average person in Britain. I, I think a lot of us have had enough of the whining and the moaning of people who really have never suffered anything themselves other than self-inflicted wounds. Well, it is really appropriating the suffering of your ancestors, uh, and that should not be something that is uh, celebrated. But in yeah. modern Australia and in the West in general, it is.